The zoo is a great place to practice with your camera. You have lots of things to take photos of. Fast animals, slow animals, people, plants, wide angle scenes, <laughs> take your pick. That being said, there are also a whole bunch of ways that you can set your camera while you're there, and there are lots of obstacles that can trip you up. Let's talk about exposure mode first. Assuming that you aren't using auto or program mode, you may want to use aperture priority or shutter priority, depending upon your subject. Some of you do like to shoot everything in manual mode. I'm not one of those people though. <laughs> if you're photographing an animal that is moving around fairly quickly, like a monkey swinging in the trees or a giraffe walking around, use shutter priority. That way, you'll be able to choose your shutter speed and your camera will choose the appropriate aperture. As for how fast you want your shutter speed, it depends on your subject. Start at around 1, 1 25th, and then just creep it faster if you need to. For fast motion, like little squirrel monkeys, I like to be shooting at 1 500th or faster. If you are photographing something that is pretty stationary, you can use aperture priority. That way you can adjust aperture to create the depth of field effect that you desire. You do need to choose a metering mode as well. This is how the camera determines the correct exposure. I talk more about what metering is and what modes you might have to choose from in this video. Now, whether you use aperture priority or shutter priority, you'll still need to adjust ISO sensitivity. Start out at your camera's base ISO and then just move it up if you need to. You may want to consider auto ISO where your camera will decide for you. You often have ways to put limits on it as well. I talk about that in this video. One thing that you do not want to do to brighten your exposure is use flash. Your camera's flash is not only possibly going to scare the animals, it probably won't be powerful enough to reach the animal. Just turn it off. If you're shooting in auto and the flash pops up automatically, just turn the dial over to P, which on many cameras will not fire the flash if you keep your pop-up in the closed position. On to focus. You'll probably be using autofocus, and you may have several options for this. Consider using a continuous autofocus or even a tracking autofocus if you have it. That way, even after you half press the shutter release button, the camera will continue to focus on your subject until you actually take the photo. And if you're using tracking, it might even follow your subject if it moves. Check your camera's manual to determine what your autofocus settings are called and then where to set them. Let's talk about color now. At the zoo, I like the colors to be as wild as the animals. A warm look works well with the lush environments and the colorful animals. You raw shooters can set and forget and have the maximum flexibility to adjust white balance and saturation when post-processing. I take a lot of photos at the zoo, so I normally shoot JPEG with the saturation increased over standard. Uh, and if there's a hint of cloud or you know, if I'm working in shadows, I set the white balance to either cloudy or shade. This will bring a warm look to your photos. Monitor and adjust though. Too warm and things can look muddy. So use your judgment and just apply these factors to your liking. The most critical aspect of zoo photography is lens selection. The zoo is a great place to carry a do-it-all lens, like this 18-200 DX lens. For FX folks, there's a Nikon 28-300 as well, and Canon and other brands have similar options. Now these do-it-all lenses aren't going to win any prizes for sharpness or low-light photography, but when you need to go from wide angle to telephoto in a hurry, they're a fantastic choice. Of course, it's also fun to get up close with some of the big guns that do excel in low light, like this 70-200 f2.8. I don't bring this every time because it's a lot of lens to carry around, but every once in a while, it's fun to bring the heavy artillery. If you have a lot of gear, you have to think to yourself, do I want to carry everything around or do I want a little more freedom and just have you know, the camera as a side accessory? If you go to the zoo occasionally or you've traveled you know, to one of the top zoos in your country, you may want to carry a bit more gear you know, and be ready for everything. I talk about some of those options in my DSLR as a lifestyle video. The most important thing about the zoo is to have fun watch the animals, and for us photographers, to capture the experience. My advice is to balance those three elements. If I bring all of my gear, I'm having less fun and seeing less. If I just bring a wide angle prime, I'm missing out on some of the close-up action. So for me, the key is to find a balance, have fun, and plan my next trip to the zoo as soon as I get home. 